I've been getting like really comfortable in iRacing. I've been driving the same series now for two years, the Porsche Cup, and it's time for a challenge. A time attack challenge. <laughs> Prodigy Racing has opened up an opportunity for four sim racers to get into real life motorsports. There is an MX5 Time Attack Challenge that they have teamed up with Williams Gaming Club to host, running from October to December. At the end of the Time Attack Challenge, the top 12 drivers will get to compete in a single race where the winner will get a Prodigy Pass. A Prodigy Pass is your ticket at one week, all expenses paid, real life racing, and an opportunity to become a pro driver. So over the next three months, I'm dedicating all of my time to bettering my racecraft, my pace, my physical strength and physical endurance on the off chance that I make it. And right now I probably won't, definitely not ready yet. So let's get to work. Let's take a look first at what this competition actually looks like. Williams Gaming Club and Prodigy Racing teamed up. Two ways to get into the finals, top 36 of the iRacing Normal MX-5 Cup Series or top 12 in the PRL Time Attack Series. They follow the same track schedule and at the end of the 10 weeks, all 48 drivers are split up into two finals races where the winner gets a Prodigy Pass. <laughs> So, it's day one. My plan right now is to do, um, I do a 40 minute session. I'm gonna go to the gym, and then we're gonna drive some more. But yeah, let's focus right now on just getting a baseline uh, on the board. <sighs> session just opened, so let's see if any of the practice will pay off. Quite a rough start to my morning. I decided to absolutely ship it on a race and ended up having my PC crash about four laps in. Yeah, my wheel disconnected. I have no sound. Trying not to think about that too much. I also got left off of the list that they sent in for the time trial, so I'm not able to compete in that right now either. Instead, I'm just gonna get my mind away from iRacing go to the gym, and this is going to be a pretty crucial part of these next couple of months for me as well. Running at 6.9 miles an hour, 28 minute, but okay. God damn, first workout done. I am sweat like, I don't know if you can see my shirt, it's fucking black. 5K, heavily focused on legs today. Uh, probably gonna do that throughout the entire course of this because I think legs are most important when driving a race car. Also back and neck, gotta get on the neck. Uh, first workout done, let's go work on some driving skills. Start of day two, the session is open. It's like 3 p.m. because yesterday or last night, I spent like four hours playing mini golf with my girlfriend. It was awesome, it was worth it. I mean, it's two o'clock, so. <laughs> We, we woke up pretty late. Right now, the fastest time is a 35.2. I think we can do that. Something else to note is the fact that it's like 95 degrees outside, so we are in another heat wave. Perfect timing. It, there, there's, it just doesn't feel like home if I'm not sweating my absolute nuts off inside of my sim. That was our outlap. I'm gonna quickly walk over uh, the track. So breaking at the one for turn one, or just really just before the one and coming around here you kind of want to have a tight line on exit you don't want to ride out to the left because you really need to stay to the right to open up this next corner and you end up scrubbing speed if you're trying to cut across in the middle of it second braking zone where the tarmac changes right there we're going to break basically right before or on top of that down to second gear uh, obviously you want to stay on the track here coming into the third braking zone the tarmac changes color again it's a lot harder to see here you can also use the dark spot in the grass open up this corner it's pretty important that you have a good run through this right hand because uh, it's going to lead through these s's and it's basically a straight so the speed that you carry through there will continue all of the way to the next braking zone which is just past this bridge and i use this kink on the left side i break after that kink so about i try to break like 10 to 15 meters after that kink on the left side kind of battling with the elevation here to keep grip and keep the wheel in a straight line coming up that right hander and then you have these s's on the top of the hill when i open up this left hander same thing for this right hander try and find a kind of neutral line i suppose that gets you as straight 
through there as possible. Braking right when the tires kind of come onto that curb right there. So broke a little bit early in this instance, but that's my marker for that top of the hill corner. That's corner number 14. Final corner, super, super important corner. Uh, lift, brake, and get back on throttle as you hit that last curb. So you can see it in my telemetry there as well. Really important that you utilize that for a good run. Our first full lap in the time attack is a 36.6. Not a super bad start, honestly, but I mean, we have a long way to go. 35.2 is the fastest time right now. So we have a lot of, a lot of time to make up. By lap number 12, we set a 35.9. So we're in the 35s, which is great. And then I'm sliding out around turn number four there, which will happen a lot and I just reset. This is my first time doing a time attack ever in iRacing, so I'm not really used to it. It would take me some time to settle in and our first session you'll see that I drove off the track quite a few times. So that invalidates that lap. Lap number 26 comes around. Obviously the track, the lap is already invalidated, uh, but I figure, you know what? I'll just take it smooth for the rest of the lap and I'll give it a go on my next lap. However, tire in the dirt on the left side, trying to open up that S for no reason. And that was an incident that would happen quite a lot and really ruined some good laps for me, as well as the incidents that seem to happen pretty often every now and then I would have just like a random incident that would never occur again like this one top of the hill sliding out to the right but you just reset and go again the beauty of time trials however it's it's honestly really annoying to have to reset because your tires are cold so you have to do a full lap and a half to get your tires up to temperature by lap 34 we set something that was semi-respectable heading towards the first braking zone like I said the one is your marker here and you want to use as minimal steering as possible. You see me throwing the wheel quite far to the right. That's something that as we go through the week, I'm going to try to fix. It's a bad habit that I have. And, oh God, I, it's almost hard to watch sometimes because it gets really bad at some points. You do see me using the neutral steering quite often here, which is good. But once I start to get on throttle, it's like I try and throw a lot of angle later in the corner, which I really don't need to be doing. And it's actually scrubbing the tires and losing me a pretty decent chunk of time. As I fix that, I'll begin to pick up what I call invisible time, which is just really less scrubbing and carrying more speed through the mid corner because that's kind of what scrubbing does is it loses you that mid corner speed which transfers to the exit of course at the moment 35.9 was still our fastest lap heading towards the final corner really the main one you need to hook up you can lose or gain a tenth and a half to two tenths here looking like a pretty solid run definitely too much steering still on that exit uh, but at this point a 35.9 you know you don't need to drive the perfect lap so 35.6 with that like I said, semi-respectable. So we just finished our first session. Joey ended P10 right now uh, in the standings. I'm P12. He's at a 35.61 and I'm at a 35.63. I hop right into another time trial session. I was pretty depressed from my time, as you could probably tell just by my showmanship in that little interview. It was quite sad. And in this session, my worst enemy would be this corner. This is corner number 14 at the top of the hill, running that downhill section. Hard to see there, but I scrubbed way too much speed off. I'm, I try staying in second instead, and it kind of works for me better, but I'm still losing a ton of speed through the braking. And I, I think I was just braking too much, hesitating on the throttle. My line wasn't quite right. It, it just was not working for me. Looking at our laps, and I wanna highlight something real quick, cause this will carry through the entirety of the time, a time attack session, is that I used to do about three laps per run, but as the laps went on, I began to do my out lap and then one lap, my out lap and then one lap, my out lap and then one lap. And I just found this to be the best way to get my tires at a prime temperature. So when you reset on the time attack, it starts you on corner 14. So you have like three corners until the start line, including this, final corner in the very long straight and that wasn't enough time to get your tires primed for your first lap so you had to drive those few final corners when you reset and then you had to drive an entire lap and you'll you'll notice that my first lap out I'm going to call this my out lap I would go extremely slow through most of these corners I wanted to scrub and like get my tires heated up just a little bit 
but I did not want to overdo it. You can see me lifting on the straight. I wanted to keep my tires slightly cool because if you get them at just the right temperature on your flying lap, by the end of the lap, the extra grip that you have makes a massive difference, especially through these final two corners. This is still my out lap here. You'll notice I'm going pretty damn slow, really focusing on getting a good run through the final corner. That's really the only thing that matters on your out lap. And sometimes I would get a horrible run after driving an extremely slow outlap and I would just have to park the car, reset, and do it again. And I guess that's just the nature of time trials. It's extremely, well, it's, I was going to say it's extremely annoying, but thinking about it, I mean, it makes sense. And as the week went on, I got used to it, but uh, it still, it, it took a lot of time basically to just get prepped for one lap. Now, <laughs> we're on lap 56 of the second session. And this would end up being my best lap of the session. So we're going to take a little bit of a look at it. You'll notice that I'm steering a lot less, especially on corner entry, still throwing it a little bit too far to the right steering wise uh, mid corner, at least for the first corner. You'll see in some of the other ones, I'm getting much, much better at kind of keeping a neutral steering all of the way through the corner. This next one, you definitely do need to be a bit aggressive with the steering, but I'm not nearly as aggressive as I was in the beginning of this session. Really trying to avoid this first curb on the right as much as I can right there. If you take too much of that, it absolutely messes up your run all of the way down this like fairly long straight leading to corner number seven, which is the beginning of the uphill section. Breaking just after that kink, slightly late apex here. Keep the wheel straight keep the wheel straight. I mean, you really just want to keep the tire straight. Generally keeping the wheel straight will end up doing that for you. A little bit of counter steering never hurt anybody. Taking as much of that, both of those curbs as I can, that would be something I would change a little bit later. I didn't even realize that it may be slowing me down at this point. Staying in second gear, getting on the throttle early and building throttle actually, so not straight to 100% through there as you're, you have limited grip at the top of the hill. Final corner, lift before the curb, brake in the middle and use the brakes to turn. I end up scrubbing the steering quite a bit here as you can see but still come across the line for a I guess this is more respectable than the last lap because it's going to be better a 35.47 I was pretty happy with that for my first day on the uh in the time trial I decided to do one more session of driving ended up getting my times down to a 35.47 highest time is still a 35.26 so we're only about two tenths off of the best time right now Joey is also driving right now he's currently sitting at p12 with a 35.61. Probably not the greatest angle of it right there, but it is what it is. Yeah, day two has gone good. So I, this is technically day one because we didn't actually get to drive yesterday. Day two of the gym, let's fucking go. Uh, it was like a Travis Scott concert in there. So I didn't actually get to get the, the treadmill. The treadmills were all full. Look how busy it is. Like there are cars everywhere. I don't know how I even found a parking spot. Time to get back to work on some editing and some time trialing. Look how pretty it is. At the, oh shit, it's raining. Fuck. Hello, Marley. This is not my cat. She's so sweet. Not my cat. I don't know if the mic picks it up, but there's a cricket losing its shit right now. Losing its absolute shit. Here is the updated leaderboard. We have been shuffled down to P12. It has us at the top, but we're actually beneath this. Here's us, P12. Joey's right behind us, he's P13. It's hard to describe how insanely loud and annoying this cricket is. Dude, even with the hating cricket, chirping away uh, basically right beneath our feet. We hopped into another time trial. This is lap number 56. And I had a slightly different approach to this time trial. It was basically, I was trying to be a bit more aggressive. I mean, this is 56 laps in. So I had about what, 55 laps with basically no success. And at some point I started being a little bit more aggressive, taking a shallower line through that corner. That's corner two and three into the beginning of the first set of S's really, really trying to get onto the throttle as early as possible and basically just dealing with whatever sliding would happen uh, via counter steering and being prepared to kind of catch the car, but focusing on just getting on throttle as early as possible and seeing how that went for me. Up the hill, actually a fairly decent run here. It's very easy to lose grip up that corner when you go over that crest. So maintaining grip there is basically all you need to do. 
opening up the left hander at the top of the hill S's and using the grass with the right tire. As long as you have that left tire on the tarmac, it serves as the grip that you need to turn the car. All the grip is over there anyway. Second gear through here, pushing way too deep. And that would be an issue I would run into pretty often. These, these final, what, like four corners I would struggle with. And I think part of it is because I was resetting so often before I got to those corners that I wasn't getting to practice them as much. And I want to hop into garage 61 and we'll actually take a peek at how much time I lost there. It still was a better lap, but it could have been much better. So taking a look at the outside of the car, I'm going way too deep here. I'm missing that curb on the inside. I'm pretty sure you just want to be attacking the absolute hell out of that curb. And I I was getting the car too unsettled down this hill, which was causing it to slide more than I would like, uh, which is disallowing grip to the tires. So through corner number 14 and corner number 17, let's break it down with telemetry. Ooh, yeah, we're getting fancy. The red line is just a base lap, and then the blue line is the lap that I just did. Taking a look at the throttle, I get off of the throttle a lot later in uh, the lap I just did, which makes me carry more speed throughout the mid corner of 14. And you can see it's basically because my line is going way deeper, which is going to hurt my exit through here. And you'll see that in the speed as we come through there. I have to hesitate onto throttle number one to allow the car to stay on track. And that brings my speed down. So I have a slower exit speed, but more than that, the steering angle. So I was steering way too much. Like I said, I was trying to be more aggressive. Uh, it ends up scrubbing speed and that hurts you a lot more than it helps you. Taking a look at that final corner, I'm entering it with less speed than the lap that we're using to compare here, which was slightly faster, at least for the sector. One point, almost 1.2 seconds to 1.4. So we lose about eight hundredths just through that the exit of the final corner. We're getting off of the throttle later on the lap that we just did. And looking at the brake pressure, our brakes on the lap we just did actually look a little bit better. We're getting on slightly earlier, but not building as much pressure. And that's kind of a theme of how I drove a lot of the week. It would shift around. Our throttle was fairly similar, and you can see that little spike in our speed. That is because we had that little bit of a slide. You can also see it in our steering, and this is ultimately what kills this sector for us because that scrubbing is going to bring your speed down, and that is going to lose you time all of the way to the finish line, which is an extremely long run. Just in those two final corners, we lost 0.28 seconds. Just finished my first session and we are not where I would like to be. We did have a few moments where we were within a tenth of the leader uh, going into the final corner and then I cocked it. That final corner is so, so tough on this track. Here is the leaderboard. I didn't actually move at all. I think I actually went, I, I went down actually. So I moved down during that session because people kept setting better time. So I'm P14 at the moment. P1 is a 35, one five, and then one eight, and then two zero. My wrists are hurting from driving. My brain is hurting a little bit. I'm gonna take a break, do a run, and uh, we'll be back. Just got done with the gym session for day three. We did split squats and military presses with my girlfriend who's filming right now. We're gonna go back right now and do some Garage 61, uh, some analyzing, get on a call with Joey and see if we can find a couple of tents, get a real idea of how to accurately reach our optimum that way. So I wanna break down uh, the corners that I was actually doing right or that I think I was doing right. The red is me, the blue is Joey. So we're comparing times at the moment and you can see I'm gaining a ton of time in the first half of the track two tenths in the first corner alone. And here's me trying to articulate that to Joey. The thing that I that I changed today was not, again, it's kind of like that, the same thing as the last corner, where like once you get the rotation with the, with the, steer, with the, the braking and the shifting, as soon as you hit that curb, it's just like that final corner actually. It's like go to half throttle as soon as you hit that curb and slowly build. and the car just plants itself and it, it will keep spinning, but it doesn't drip, it doesn't slide. Joey was faster in turn seven, so I needed to make some adjustments. I think it's worth it. Like I remember doing this run and this being my best run through sector three and I could not replicate it. I think it's cause I was trying to gain a bunch of time going up that hill. This is the hill in question for anybody wondering. Turn number seven, it's literally called uphill. Instead of like really, really getting the exit 
And I know I said really, really getting the exit, but it doesn't need to be like an extremely late apex, but it does need to be a good exit because you carry that speed all of the way until corner number 14, which is the penultimate corner. Now, the real question, am I able to take what I've learned in analysis and apply it to the track? Well, taking a look at where the car is currently off of the track, it would be a pretty good indicator of how this entire session would go. Lap 29, this is my out lap, so I'm not trying to put in a time here. I'm just trying to go slow, save the tires, and prep them for the next lap. And somehow, <laughs> this kind of sets the tone. This really sets the tone on an out lap, driving off of the track and just struggling like massively to set a time in at one point i mean what is this this is almost this is like 10 laps without even getting a successful out lap in lap number 33 let's take a look at what happens i drive off the track heading into the final corner which is going to destroy my run so i'm not able to yeah I mean, you can see what happened there lap number 35 for whatever reason i'm trying to open up this corner a ton i get a slide at the top of the hill and completely cut the uh the curb heading towards corner number 14 there which is going to um, invalidate this lap, obviously. Lap number 38. And coming through the first bit of S's, boom, that was actually a slowdown. So we cut that corner, that was a slowdown. Skip ahead to lap number 77. Still have yet to put in anything resembling a decent time, holding it way too shallow here, and that's gonna send you off the track. Yeah, shallow entrance gives you a terrible exit. I was extremely frustrated, as you can tell. Now, at this point, Joey does something magnificent. He sets a 135.278. That's a great time. Let's take a look at how he chose to celebrate that one. Putting his car through the barrier, defying the laws of time and space, and continuing to do something that I think even uh, Stephen Hawking would struggle to find an explanation for. The bumper flying off, that's in line with the laws of physics for sure. Uh, and, and yeah, he... I don't really know what was going on here, but it didn't matter because he set a fantastic time. So his session was done. Now, this is literally my first flying lap after Joey set that time. This is hours into driving. And I think this also speaks to why I think it's important to have somebody kind of pushing themselves alongside you because it does help sometimes. Still taking a really narrow line through there, but managing to keep it on track just barely, breaking a little bit earlier now and lighter for the entrance into the first set of S's here. Taking that first curb on the right, it helps with rotation. Keep the grip on the left side, avoid that first curb. Straight line through here, straight line. Heading uphill, super important. Slight apex, like I said, slight late apex. There we go, we got it. No sliding, the rear end stays where it needs to be. We are going to need to open up this left-hander. Slight lift coming up here, left tire all over this curb. Throw the car to the right, center of the car over the curb. Left tire stay on the tarmac, giving us grip. Heading towards the corner number 14, braking a bit harder, a bit later, and actually using first gear for rotation, which I found to help a tremendous amount, which is the way I was originally taking it. Final corner, lift, a little bit of brake, let the brake turn the car. Uh, it's a lot of steering, but we managed to hook it up somehow, avoid going off track, and you are not gonna believe what we There is no fucking way. I don't even, I don't know if this is an exaggeration. <laughs> Nobody is going to believe this. Me and Joey just did 90 laps almost each without any improvement. And then, like two laps after Joey broke his record, he goes to a 1 point or 135.278, which is good enough for P7. Like literally immediately after that, look at this time. There is no fucking way. There is no fucking way. You can't see Joey's time right there, but. Just so you guys can see it on the leaderboard. Look at this. It's at the same time. After five hours of driving, we set the same time four minutes apart. <laughs> Just to highlight something, this, these are the leaders, right? These are the two guys at the top. They drove those laps, 35 flat and 35 one, in 13 laps and 16 laps with uh, basically single digit incidents. Take a look down at me and Joey down here. We got 200 laps each <laughs> with about um just about on par for incidents all i'm gonna say is that that just shows how hard we're working through this that's what i'm seeing you guys oh
Oh, dude, I have my, my shit is all. Bro, what the? Checking in on the standings, and for the first time overnight, it held. Me and Joey maintained P9 and 10 with our identical times. Uh, it looks like people are moving around up there, but it's kind of just like the top like five switching around. You can see between the top four, it is half of a tenth. Between Angelo all the way down to Thibud, Thibud. I did a little bit of practice this morning for an upcoming endurance event in the LMP2. And as much as I would like to get back into the time trial right now and get a better time and try and move myself further up, a big part of content creation is creating content. So I need to edit all of this footage at some point and it's gonna be right now. So gonna try, unless I get shuffled down, I think I'm just gonna let that time stay for the entirety of the day. End of day number four, I'm in the middle of a training session right now and I think I have every sector figured out. I just set a new optimum on every sector. I just haven't have to string them together now, which is the hard part. I'm gonna do a little bit more practice just to solidify the muscle memory. And then I'm gonna call it a night and tomorrow we are going to go for our personal best. I swear to God, I'm going to bed after this. Another check-in. Uh, I said I was just going to do a little bit of practice and then head to bed. That was at lap like 25. I just finished lap 70. And we did indeed lower our optimum. And beyond, we got a slightly better time once again. So we have our optimum at 35.011. And we just set a 35.2. I set every, an optimum in every single sector tonight. So I, I took, I think it was 1.5 when I moved into it tonight and now it's 0 0.011. So I took off a ten, almost a 10th and a half off of my optimum time, which is pretty big at this stage of driving. So half of a 10th, I was at uh, 35.7, right now I'm at 35.22, half of a 10th moves me up to P7. So from P11 to P7. We'll see when I wake up if that stands the test of time or the test of 24 hours, not even 24 hours. I'll probably sleep for like five hours and I'll probably wake up in like P10. Day five is here and look at this. We did it, still P7 with our time. So it's the test of time for at least one day. I'm gonna start today with the gym and we'll be back to work on some stuff. It is day five, I think. It's day five, it's Saturday. I just wanted to say something more than, you know, this is the standing or this stuck or I got a better time and talk about a couple of things. Uh, number one being why I'm doing this. I started sim racing like a lot of people I think when I was in a really dark place and I found sim racing to be this thing that just took my mind off of everything else, like nothing else mattered except this next corner or, uh, you know, this, this battle I have going on or the corner after the next corner, trying to set up for something like everything just kind of faded away. And I got so focused on this one thing. And it was something that I, I found to distract me really well, which I needed at the time. And I think my life would have been totally different if I hadn't leaned into it. So uh, I'm trying to give back in some way. If I were to move into IRL motorsports, I think I don't really think that's giving back as much as this is. And that brings me to this point where I want to say that I'm not doing this just because I want to get into real life motorsports. I would love to. But the biggest part of why I'm recording this and why I am attempting this at all is so that you guys can see that it's one, never too late to start something. And two, it's not stupid to do something you love or something you really want to do. Like, I feel like a lot of people see something that they really want to do and they're like, man, that's a cool dream. But I think that you can really do it. And I think you can do anything if you love it. Like if you, if you really want, I mean, you could do stuff if you didn't love it too. But if you love something, it's so much easier. Like it is so much easier and that, that whole thing, I always hear people say like, oh, it's, you'll never go to work a day in your life if you love what you do. And it's kind of true. It sounds so stupid. Like I've heard that so many times and I thought I was doing something I loved for a long time until I discovered this. So yeah, I'm doing this more so because I want 
other people to be able to find something that they love. And I think for a lot of people, it's probably going to be sim racing. Like, it's fucking cool. How many times since dinosaurs have been alive till now have you been able to drive a race car that accurately as a normal person? Never. So if you're watching this and you've never sim raced, try it. Or whatever that one thing is that you kind of always had your eye on, just do it. Because life is way too short to like see things fl flow by. And uh, 10 years down the line, you'll be like, man, I wish I started doing that 10 years ago. Right now is your 10 years ago from 10 years from now. So help 10 years from now yourself out by being the 10 years ago version of yourself that 10 years from now version of yourself would want you to be now. Well said. Let's get back to work. Oh, shit. I almost just opened the door into a Porsche. Whoops, Porsche. Before we get back into the sim, it is probably worth it for me to tell you how the points work. So for the time trials, like I said, the top 12 people are going to get an opportunity to race in the finals. How do you end in the top 12 of the time trials? The points are based on your position at the end of each week. P1 would get 100 points, P2 would get 99 points, and P5, which let's say I am, would get 96 points. Did I skip a number? I don't know. Anyway, you get how it goes. 199 all of the way down to 100th place, getting one point. At the end of the 12 weeks, you sum up everybody's points, and the top 12 are the ones who get to the finals. You also have three drop weeks, so your three lowest scoring weeks are not counted in the end goal. Everybody's three lowest scoring weeks are not counted. Uh, so I could take two weeks off if I wanted to and still have one drop week. Uh, our goal is essentially to finish in the top 12 every single week, and that should basically guarantee us a spot in the finals. Now let's get back into the sim. Okay, well, skip forward to, I don't know, three hours and 100 laps. Nothing, nothing tonight. I'm not even going to show the replay, nothing tonight. It was a lot of laps and a lot of nothing happening, except for the only thing that happened, my fucking sock got like a hole in it from driving too much. I, I think I did figure some things out, but I think what really ended up happening is I just drove so long that I just lost it. I mean, I did three different sessions. Each one was about 40 laps. So I did about 120 laps today. We remain in P7, 347 laps. I'm gonna hang out with my girlfriend when she gets home have a little bit of a relaxing rest of the night and hopefully the muscle memory that I have put in today pays off tomorrow. So it's day six, I think. There's only one more day left after today. I've just been editing all day. About to go to the gym to quote unquote get the, get the day started. It's five o'clock PM right now. So it is, uh, it's quite late. What do you have to say about that, Oliver? We are still in P7. I think that that position might stand for quite some time. We then headed to the gym. My ankles were hurting from driving and running, so I actually took a day off of running today. So I wasn't planning on recording anything tonight. I was just gonna have the day be the day I've been editing all day, uh, but I decided to tune into the leaderboard and look at what I found. We have been moved down along with Joey. We are now in P10. Joey is in P16. And taking a look at the bigger leaderboard, uh, so P10 with a 35.229 right now. If we were to get one tenth faster, so a 129, that would move us up into P P8. Wasn't actually planning on driving tonight, but I have no choice. So we must defend our position before we get knocked out of the top 12. I told Joey about it, uh, that he got knocked down and he ran home from a friend's house and is driving right now, so he's already on it. I was really hoping that last time would stand, but I got called back to battle against my will. And this is lap 75 of this session, so we were already pretty deep. I mean, this is, what, 75 laps? It's probably like an hour and a half in. We've been driving for a while, and look at this. Look at this neutral steering. Well, 
ignore that extremely far to the right moment, but apart from that, look at that neutral steering, it was beautiful. Opening it up all the way to the right and going much deeper for this corner. Neutral steering, again, beautiful. It's much easier to avoid going off track there. You can carry a lot more speed when you open that up more. Tons of neutral steering through that corner. You wanna carry as much speed as humanly possible. Keep the left side of the tires loaded up all the way through here. Avoid that first curve on the right side. Everything is looking fantastic here. Honestly, at this point, the car seemed to just be driving itself. Corner number seven, the uphill. I would mess this up all of the time down to second early, let the car rotate itself. Yep, build throttle back off, keep the grip, keep the car straight, cut that curb as much as I can. Same thing here, right tire through the dirt, open up, get those left tires on the curb, get ready to ship the car over this curb. Left tires stay on the tarmac, they keep that grip and let the, uh, disallow the car from sliding. Into corner number 14, down to first gear for rotation, get on throttle extremely early, don't build all of the way up as you want to maintain that grip, you build throttle too much and the car spins. Final corner, gorgeous oh baby it was it was gorgeous everything just happened for me this lap i don't know what was going on everything just happened we had two purple sectors oh man and across the line we go for a 35.11 that was it for me i parked the car i'm out of the car i'm good for the night okay this is going to be joey's new best lap how do i know it is because I literally just said a new best lap, and when I said a new best lap, Joey sets a new best lap. Here he goes. This is gonna be a monster exit. Here we go. Monster exit. Come on. Come on. Oh, that's good. That's good. That's good. Oh, that's sexy. Oh, fuck, that's sexy. Oh, shit, he's cooking. Oh, my God. Everybody get out the kitchen. It's about to explode. Oh, fuck. Ego is in the building, and he is not ready for this shit. Let's go. No. Oh, fuck. Oh, no. Oh, well, you guys can't hear him because he's through Discord, but he's uh, he's whining and crying around, pooping his pants like a little baby right now. <laughs> All right, we're going to hop into. Did like two sessions with Joey, and we fought our way back up, baby. There we are in P8, baby. We are back within the top 12. We have a 135.112. Fastest time at the moment is a 134.934, which is just about my optimum. I think it's definitely possible for me to get into the 34s. However, there's only a day and a half left, so we'll see if it's even necessary. Um, I'll probably try and fight my way up into the top five. I think that's definitely feasible. Right now, I am absolutely uh, I'm so tired right now, so I'm just gonna call it and um, do some more tomorrow. Beginning of, I guess this is the last day. I mean, there's technically another day after today, but uh, this will be my last day. So hopefully I can set a time that withstands the next day and Hide these things in like a crazy way. Yeah, so we're about to head to the gym. As we do. I'm gonna hit a 5k today. In the future, I'll probably try and record a workout for you guys so you guys can see. I don't know if it's really making any difference, like if people who look for racing drivers actually care about that type of thing. But I'm just prepping just in case. It's it's been hard to find information on how important that is to teams. This is a sin. Do not put your do not put your gear on the ground. That's a sin. Content creator sin. I fix it though. I redeem myself. I move it into my flip flop. Stroke of genius right there. I genuinely thought that the uh, the time trial ended tomorrow, Tuesday, but it's Monday and apparently it ends tonight at 10 p.m. So tonight is it. I got shuffled down last night one position. So we were P8 last night. We are now P9, 35.112. If I were to get 0 0.03 seconds faster, or if I could land a 35 flat, like 35.05, it would move me up into P4. <sighs> Week's almost done.
Let's go. We're top 12 right now. Let's go. Let's go. Let's solidify it. <sighs> the optimism would be short lived as I just could not make it happen for myself. I was cutting corners. I was barely ever even setting a flying lap. And when I did, it just was not good enough. There were times where I would, I mean, this is, this is what happened most of the time is I would mess up corner one and I would go like a 10th down almost, which I would just go ahead, stop the car, reset. And then on some laps where I was doing really great, I actually set a purple sector on this lap. I would end up absolutely shafting the final exit. And as much as I would like to finish it, I would, I, I just parked the car and got out. We were running out of time and skill. I have just done 85 laps. I'm gonna get down in this chair so you can see me. I just did 85 laps. Flying laps completed was about 10 or 11. I think like five of those were within half of a tenth of my best right now. My optimum is a one, 34.97. And I matched my optimum sectors in every single sector today. I just cannot string it together. It's 6 p.m. There's four hours left of the time trial. I'm going to take a break. I'm gonna eat some chicken. My girlfriend made some, some like chicken pot roast. So I'm gonna eat some chicken and then I'm gonna come back and give it one hour to try and finish it off. And like a scene from a movie, this is well within like the high 100s in terms of what number lap this is. Beautiful braking. Beautiful steering. I'm keeping grip. I'm gaining time all of the way through. I'm just about on par for a 34 at this point. Very low 35. Lose a little bit of time there, but it's okay. Heading towards the hill. Two purple sectors. All we have to do is bring it home. We, we don't even need to gain time at this point. We just, we just stay on par with our optimum and we bring it home. Really good through the top of the hill. Very minimal sliding, almost none. Corner number 14, this could be a big point of contention. Probably built throttle up a bit slowly there. Perhaps a little bit too much steering. Last corner, please. please. Two sessions, three hours, and 200 laps. And look where it got me. That's right, baby. I moved down. Somebody else skipped ahead of me. So I went from P9 to P10 in the last three hours. I cannot express how insanely sad I was that I botched that. We were on course for a 35.03 Frick Sector 4. Joey's house is currently being remodeled by a hurricane, so he did not get to drive today and not a ton yesterday either. He ended up in P21. And I feel like I'm gonna get called out by somebody at some point because looking at the top 10, um, the top 12 actually, three people with more than 100 laps. There's only one person with more than 200 laps and that is me with 494. <laughs> A goal of mine right now is that hopefully by the end of these three months or towards the latter weeks, I'm able to set faster times in less laps because uh, right now it seems like I'm exploiting something or not exploiting something, but it looks like I'm just throwing shit at the wall until something sticks, which is kind of what I'm doing, but I call that learning. Let's take a look at the final standings of week one. We finished P10, we got 91 points. It's not, I mean, it could have been better. It always could have been better, right? Joey, P21 with 80 points. He unfortunately missed like the whole last day. And next week is Motorsport, Motorsport Usher Schleben. This will be really interesting. I literally don't know that track at all. So stay tuned next week as I try to outwork people who are a lot faster than me. Demon on the streets, I'm a heathen on the beat. 
I'm not hurting her, but I got her screaming in the sheets. 